So we're going to try swapping out the straight pipe for an, my muffler from Powerhouse Racing. So this is a Powerhouse Racing exhaust, um, and it comes with like this burn stain muffler. This is where it's kind of nice because I made it so I use their same V-band setup so I can just bolt this on and off. Now, this might be a little bit shorter. This was really close to the bumper before, so I want to see if it fits because it's a four-inch pipe, and I believe this is a five-inch tip, and it is close now. So if I give you guys perspective, I just don't want to burn the... I don't want to burn the bumper. You can see there, it's really close. I might have to play with it, wiggle it some, um, and it should work, but that four inch pipe being so much smaller allowed me a lot more room to play with. Um, and it also sticks out it's a little bit more. I think this truly sits flush, which was my fault. I actually told them to cut it down, and I think I had a little too close, and uh, yeah. So, be easy though. Literally, it's one clamp, comes off, slides on, clamp it up, done. So let's clamp it up. As you can see right there, it is definitely just a smidge longer, so hopefully that's okay because um, I don't want it to burn the bumper, burn back in. So we'll see here. I don't want it to, the fumes come up and burn everything. But you can see that definitely does have at least a muffler section in it. So let's give it a shot. Uh, hopefully it's okay. And that was fast. This is where V-band clamps do come in handy. They can also be a pain in the butt, but you can see it sits really close. It could be a, a sea hair. I'll say it that way. Out, but it does clear. Like it does fully clear. Again, this is a PHR exhaust. So I mean, that's the whole point of this. Uh, it clears the whole bit there. Actually fits a little bit better than I thought it was going to. Plenty of wiggle room even too, because I know how this thing is. But yeah, let's uh, turn on and see if it quiets it down at all. thing we're working on is back to these buttons again I've got these factory buttons here one is for the front spoiler which obviously we don't have you can't run them when you have a uh, aftermarket intercooler and stuff it just gets in the way it's a very tight area uh, we never got them I don't believe we never got them in the US I'm not sure if Canada got them so I don't think in the Americas we got them I know in Japan the UK they had these uh, and I think Australia too you get these spoilers that would automatically come up and down or you could physically put it down um, so yeah I always thought that was pretty cool I don't know if you can think find these on eBay and stuff, but if you ever get one, here's the part number you need for the connector then. So you can pause it there. There is the one that goes with it. So take a screenshot of that so you know which is which. Now the one I really wanted was this. This is the one that's way more common. Uh, slip control off or traction control. Um, again, this one's even simpler. So it's only four wires in the back. I believe this is like eight. It went to, do, 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 no, seven. So this also has two buttons, it lights up there. This is backlit too. Now it's gonna be a green backlit, I'm assuming. I'm assuming the light is still good on this. The reason I want to use this, I'm actually going to use it for tractor control. What I'm going to use it for is to turn my um, data logging on or off. And my goal is to have it turn on the backlit light of it. I want that to turn on when 
um, I turn on the uh, data logging. I don't want to keep my laptop with me now. I can already hear this. My buddy Steve, is, I can literally hear my buddy Steve in my ear. Ryan, get a keypad. Ryan, get a can keypad. I know. But we already have a factory slot there. It takes up no extra room because it's already a blanks button there. So why not just use one of these? It's not taking any room. I don't have to make something for it. Um, I have the connector and we have these factory little slots. So it makes it super convenient that we can do this. So let's put this down where these blanks are here, but you can still get those blanks brand new from Toyota too. This goes right in there. I think I have to use one of these two or one of these two here. I believe this one over here is a different cutout. Some reason the backside of them are slightly different, but I'm gonna put this one in. I don't know if I'm gonna put that other one in yet. I might put that one in the auto car and use that for something else. Um, but it makes it super easy because again, with the Haltech, I got a million inputs and outputs. So I have plenty of IO. So I figured why not use these? So that is the goal for today. I'm gonna make little pins here and I'm gonna show you which pins you guys need to use for this. There's a website, you can get just the pins and it makes this quite easy. Now I also need to figure out what these four pins do. I need to look up in the book real quick which each one is for. All right guys, so made my little wiring whip or an extension. Um, this is just, not Tesla, I forget, TXL wiring. And there's only four pins you can use if you see on the back of this. There's only four pins. Um, da -da 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 -da. The yellow is power, the gray is ground, and the other two are the switch part. Now, I think realistically I only need one, but the reason I put the other one in there, one that's just one extra wire, it's one of those things, if I can use it for something else or tell it something else to the ECU, um, I'm going to utilize it. If not, I'll just let the, the wire set down there free hanging for now, but I'd rather have it already built into it for one wire versus like, crap, I need to build a whole new wiring whip just to get that pin in and cut all the sheathing off. That will really irritate me. So... I'm just going to leave that in there. Uh, like I said, the wire, the yellow is power, gray is ground, and these two are the switches. So this is a momentary switch. It does not click and hold then. So if you watch, so I assume one tells it on off, but it really shouldn't matter. It should be one wire out. I'm not sure why there's two for it. Um, but yeah, I, I will find that out. I'm going to use a voltmeter then uh, and click on it here and give it some power. Uh, and I know the power and ground is because this lights up because realistically, for the switch part of it, you need no power. The power and ground, the yellow and gray, is just a backlight or backlit this. Um, so I guess one of the switches probably to tell this one, you click it on, it lights it up when it's off. So that's what it is. One is the physically, probably the momentary switch to say on. The other one is to physically tell to turn the light on is what I would assume. Again, keyword I would assume there. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll find out. So I wanted to show you a little bit more here. So wiring whip is done like i said uh let's see the part numbers here which one like i said that's from the top there again power yellow gray is ground green is switch orange is also a switch it's only four pins total on the back so i just pulled this out here you can bend it back just enough use a small flathead and then you pop this out so there's little tabs on both sides so as it sits in here there's little tabs on both sides you're going to pop one side first put pressure on that side and then uh clip the other part out now you can pull the whole dash out i just didn't feel like doing it uh because now i can just pop it in and then put the plug in this just fits in that slot now obviously it's a lot bigger so if we put it right there versus these are factory toyota blanks a little bit of difference there a little bit of difference now just so you know this one and i believe the far right one will pop right in so it has this little notch here if you try to use this one here the notch is on the opposite side and you'd have to cut it out so you'd have to take this out so i'm just using the center one i like that idea of that being in the center so yeah not a big deal but i'm gonna go ahead and pop this in now all right guys so the switch is set up it was a little confusing um the gentleman chris he was helping me there i was using actually some of his stuff i'll link his instagram right here super nice guy He's, um Great in the super community, so just can't thank him enough. Um, I was going off some of the instructions. He used one of these switches to actually open and close his garage door. So he took one of these buttons here, uh, painted it, and then had it laser engraved to say like the picture of a super with a garage door over top of it. So it opened and closed his garage door. In my case, I just wanted it to turn my logging on. So it has a power ground. We went over all this stuff. Now I'll actually show you the, how we end up using it here. But the two switch wires, one has to go to the ECU as an input, of course, and the other one actually ended up having to be a ground. I thought that one input is all I needed because there was already a ground for the power for the light, but they're separate, and that was my fault, my brain, and I couldn't find anything actually in the Toyota book. I even had Jose Valia over at Kaizen Motorsports look into it, and he's like, dude, there's nothing in here. Because usually he's like, Ryan, if I find this, he's hey, you owe me 50 bucks, but he, even he couldn't find it. So a little bit weird. It's probably there, and we have to dig more somewhere else. But that being said, it does work. So I can now have on the fly logging. Now I do have to do one other thing to get the output to work for the light to turn on or the, it might be working, uh, but I have to look into it. So let's go ahead and key the car on real quick. Oh my God. 
reach my big fat butt up over here. So let's go down to the data log switch. So right now you see it says 0 0.8 volts or whatever. And you can see switch on is zero. So when it falls to ground to zero volts, it will turn on. And that which is over here, this little icon there is your logging. So it will turn blue and show logging. So right now this is a momentary switch also. You just have to set push on, push off. And I have it set up as last state. So whenever I turn the car on, it will automatically go to the last state it was at. In my case, startup state. Actually, I want to probably put that to off. Mm, yeah. We're going to have to start off. I think that's how I'm going to do because I don't really want that on all the time because uh, God forbid I forget where it's at last and I'll be mad. But anyway, so when I click the button here, it's a momentary switch. As soon as I click it on, logging on, logging off, logging on, logging off. And you can see the voltage change here. Let's get a little bit closer. So if I click and hold, right, you can see it's holding to on. Now let off. It's still in the on position. If I click and hold, it goes to the off position now because it passed that threshold. Even though it shows zero volts, it's because of the push on, push off, pull up disabled. Uh, there's a couple other things there. But yes, it works 100%. It's only four wires. Now the goal is when I click it on, I want that to light up now and show me that, hey, this is on. I could obviously set it up too to show in the dash, but I just want this to light up itself. There's actually a little light, but that actually might be blown. So I need to look into it here, but very, very simple. And again, I'll show up on the screen what needs to be powered on and what needs to go where. Sometimes things don't go as planned. So you guys saw me talk about the slip control switch, which is now this. I had to take it all apart, which it really isn't designed to, so I had to butcher this pretty darn well to get it apart. It just was not, it was fighting me tooth and nail. I think I'll be able to use it, but I would never, yeah. So another thing I want to show you guys, this is why you can, you know, you could sand all this off. It literally is clear plastic behind it there, so it illuminates. But one of the traces went bad. I thought I powered this trace, causing it to burn up, but actually what happened was this trace just failed. I was trying to solder it here, but I didn't realize fitting in here the board sits so close to everything else it has to slide on because the button slides so close to it that you actually have to use like a pen almost um, they do make a trace pen so I'm gonna give that a shot if not then this is junk um, I'm gonna hold on to it no matter what I've got the oh crap I've got the wiring everything else done I got the connector so if the time comes I'll buy another one but they're quite salty and I just don't I'll buy a key can pad for you know what I can get for this I could probably get a keypad for 300 bucks with my discount so and that can do eight things for the small one and only have to run four wires while that being said i decided i have this one so found it online thank god i like that one there was actually a wiring diagram on online how to get this to work uh you're going to use in this my case at least five wires out of the seven so if you see inside of there there are seven pins in there the top two here there's top two in the right corner you're not going to use you're only going to use the bottom five and of that bottom five, it looks like this. This is my rainbow colored layout here. So I'm gonna explain how this works. So the blue wire there is your ground for both switches. So one of these switches is momentary. So the down is momentary. The auto off is a latch switch, okay? So when you click the off button, so the auto off button here, on the left hand side, when you click that, that initiates the yellow and blue wire. The blue is the ground, the yellow is your input. If you just hit the down button, which is momentary, it initiates the green and the blue wire. So they share the same ground. Now, once you do that, if you have something like I do, I have the PDM. What I'm going to tell the PDM is if it sees, you know, the yellow wire, whichever input I pick, and then the green wire, depending which one, to turn on or off this light here. So there's a factory light right there, which is the orange and black wire on this. The black is the ground, the orange is the power in this case. Um, and that illuminates that little green light on the front of this. So if you click this on, it should illuminate, turn it off, so on and so forth. Now, I think these buttons light up too, and I think that's what these top ones do, but I cannot figure it out. Uh, I don't want to burn this thing up. I tried using my Milwaukee battery here by giving this thing 12 volts, and it just wasn't happy. It just, I shouldn't say it wasn't happy, it just didn't do anything, so. And big thank you to, once again, Raceworks. They supplied this awesome Deutsch connector kit. And again, it comes with all the pins, even block offs, which I think is really cool. These are all solid pins on top of it. And these are actually Deutsch connectors. Um, comes with the locks, everything, two, up to 12. I very rarely use eight or 12. I am using a six in this case, but two, three, and four, I use a crap ton of. I, I, I use so many of the two that I ask for a lot more of them because there's a lot of instances where you just need two wires. Two and three is what I use the most. Four here and there. Six, I think this is the first real time I've had to use it. And I don't think I've ever had to use an eight or a 12 
except on her car, which was already supplied with a custom wiring harness from Jose Valley at Kaiser Motorsports. So, um, don't very much use those, but it is nice to have because in this case, like I keep making, made one wiring whip harness, which is still over here, took it out of the car now because I don't need it because when that time comes, at least it'll already be ready and ready to go. It's already built in, don't have to do anything. Um, it is what it is, but the other stuff I got ready here. So what I need to do next is put this in the car. But again, look at that. Perfect. Use the OEM plug there. And again, I want to make sure, did I use show you guys the part number? If I didn't, that's what I want to show y'all. So if I didn't show you guys the part number, this is it right here. Let's pull it out real quick. So here we go. That is the part number for this switch. So for the spoiler switch, which I believe there's another one that looks similar, just doesn't say spoiler. I think it says track and snow, but this is the plug you'll need. This 90980-10799, um, you'll be able to tell if it is a, what would that be, that eight pin? Yeah, I guess it's an eight pin connector. Yeah, eight pin connector on the back, and you can see it has one and then two offset like this. But it'll look something like this. And again, that is the part number, make it pretty easy on y'all. So I'm only using five of the wires right now. Um, yeah, so actually, yeah, technically there's only seven pins you can use, uh, cause the one on this side, there's not even a pin there. So, but it shows there's an eight pin connector. So yeah, we're done. Let's put this in the car and then finish up the little bit of wiring down there, but I can use the wiring that's there that I just did for that button. But I have to add one more because now I have a momentary switch, boom, 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 and a latch switch. So I can use this for dual purpose. So I don't have anything for one of them right now probably use the lash switch more than anything, but the momentary might figure out something for that. Just not sure what yet. So the spoiler button is slightly different. So remember how I said, guys, the uh, track button had to go in the center of this far right one. This one here, the spoiler button only fits in the one closest to the driver. It has that offset line there. See, the other two are sit kind of in the center. This one's offset to the one side to the right. Um, so it can only fit in this spot, unless you dremel out something that you can make it work then just make a little slit there. But it is designed to go in this spot, which is actually great for me. I want it closer to me anyway. So that's no, no big deal there. So now I got to pop all my dash panels back in and uh, fix a little bit of wiring down here. And now this button will work. All right, guys, so now we have the new button all set up. Right now, I currently am just using the momentary button, which is just a down one. The latch one I'm not using. And I'm gonna explain um, how this all works. So again, I'm using it for data logging. So this is a little bit unique. Usually we set up a generic for something like this. But in this case, I go to data logging. All right, and here, when I go to data logging, you're gonna to wanna to do a data log enable switch. I also have enabled that it, no matter what, starts logging once I get greater than 4,000 RPMs. It automatically starts logging my car, so if I forget to turn it on, as long as I'm racing, it should record everything. Um, and I should actually do, wish I could do a condition with this to say, I want it to stay on another 30 seconds after I make a race. Uh, or racing, but again people are like well, that's all you need Well, there's a lot of stuff I like to get at idle or something I see might be off and I just want to record it at that moment of time it might not be above 4,000 idle like me bucking or a cold start issue and I can just hit the button and do this so Anyway, so you go to this again. We have our AVI 16 that I'm using here. It's a push on um, Push off and it is a startup state of off. So when I start the car up every time it's going to be off so when I push this on and push it off, it will recognize once you get past this voltage, it stays on. So if I hit the momentary, which is the down button here, it shows it on. You can see that it is logging now. Off, on, off. Now, this is where people will get confused because you'll see here in the button mode, momentary. You're like, well, then I want it momentary. No, if you set it as momentary, it will literally only work as you hold it. And as soon as you let go, it will stop working. So you want it to be a push on, push off. So when you hit it once, it's on. When you hit it again, it's off again. So remember that startup state, I like to have it as off. So anytime I turn the car off, it automatically sets the switch back to off. Personal preference. Uh, pull up, you want enabled so you can see the five volt change. Now, what I also did with this is created a generic here. So over here in the generic table, uh, go ahead and open this up. Well, we'll go here. Went to generics and I chose generics output seven because I've got three other ones here I've been kind of playing around with. I keep turning on off, so I don't want to ruin them. So I know it seems a little bit weird that's out of order, but there's a reason for that. So go to here, data log light. Uh, you give it a name too. So I just called it the data log light to turn on. Um, the conditions, it's based on the state. So go down to condition settings and you can do up to three different settings, but in my, in my case, it's super simple. So I told it when input 16 or AVI 16 in this case is equal to the on position. So when the switch is on to turn on this light. So if I have it clicked on, it should work. So if I go down here to wiring, 
you'll see here right now it shows no amperage, right? I have it fused currently at two amps. So this is where you tell how you want this. You can do up to eight amps. I've fused it two. Realistically, it should be like half an amp or one amp at most. Um, because this it's an LED light and it barely sees anything. So when I click this on here, you guys will see. So hold on, put the camera up towards I click it. Ready? You can see there it's pulling right now 0 0.1 amps. It's on and working. Um, it's like next to nothing. And if you come over here, you can just barely see the green light. Actually, you can see it on pretty well. Let me go ahead and click this again here real quackly. So if I do it again, hit this momentary switch. Now it's off. Now it's on. And again, the PDM is handling that and powering out to it. So it tells it when it needs to be on or off. So pretty simple. Um, I just wanted to show you guys this. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please let me know. I really enjoy doing this stuff. And I don't know, it's fun. I really appreciate Nick and all these guys helping me. Uh, Chris over there, dude, thank you so much for the connectors and the, the whole light switch stuff. This is cool. I wish I had another. If someone wants to help a brother out, send me another slip control button. I'd appreciate it. I, I, again, I tried to show as much as I could in this video, but the trace and stuff on that is destroyed and it's pretty much going to be sucked to have replaced. So if someone has an extra they're not using, um, I'd like to make another video on that and get it set up using for something else somewhere, maybe even install it in that car uh, to use it for data logging because that car does not have anything right now. One other thing, guys, I want some recommendations. Like I said, it has two buttons there. Uh, one is for the data logging. The other one is just a push on, push off. I'm not using the push on, push off right now. I can flip flop it whichever I want to be data logging to or use it for something else. Think of something I could use that for because I don't know. The only issue with it is the push on, push off works and it'll stay latched the whole time and it doesn't affect the off button. But if I hit that off button for data logging right now, and the other button's being used, it'll automatically kick it off because when you hit the off, it automatically pops that latch button up. Obviously, it was never designed for this. It was meant for the front spoiler to go up and down. It was meant for auto on, auto up, or to automatically just push it on and off. So let me know what you guys think, what you got an idea for. Um, yeah, again, thank you all very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.